Okay, so there's about four main reasons why people get disappointed in a relationship. First of all, maybe someone promised something and didn't follow through. Number two, maybe someone said they were gonna do something and didn't follow through. Like they said, oh, I'd really like to, or they said, I'm going to, but maybe didn't actually quote unquote promise. But there's also times where we have expectations for our partners that maybe we communicated a little bit out loud, like, hey, I'd really like to go out to dinner sometime. Or maybe we're not communicating our wants and needs at all. So I'm gonna go a little bit over these four things and how to avoid disappointment in each of aspects. So one of the things about disappointment is can also lead to a break in trust if we feel like someone's promised us something, communicated something to us, said they're gonna do something, or we thought they were gonna do something for us, and then they ended up not doing it. And that disappointment and that break of trust can really impact how we see our partner, how we see our potential partner, and how we interact with the relationship, and sometimes even how we feel about ourselves and our own value. So let me tell you a little story. As an extrovert, I often used to say things like, oh, let's go do this, or let's go do that, or maybe next week we can, you know, we can go out to the park together, or next week we can go out for this walk, or next week let's go out and do this thing. And I would speak about it out loud because that's how I processed. And what I didn't realize at the time is my introverted boyfriend took that as a promise, took that as we are going to. And then I would continually let him down because my desires, my excitement, my whatever about whatever it was I wanted to do had changed. So the next week it would come and I'd be like, hey, there's this other thing going on. Let's go do this. And he was like, well, I thought we were going for a walk because that's what you said last week that we were going to do. And it took us a while to really understand that when I spoke out loud about things, that it wasn't always because I actually had set them in my calendar. So I became really clear as much as I can when I talk to people about like, hey, if I'm going to do, if I say we're going to, or let's plan on, that I actually make it as if a commitment. And when I promise something, right, it's like actually really solid. When it's in the calendar, when it's a promise, like that is unbreakable. And so when you're looking at disappointment in a relationship, actually look at what level is it? And communicate to your significant other, to your partner about what is it that you expected from the words that they said? How did you interpret the words that they said? And how do you need them to communicate more clearly in the future so you don't feel disappointed, so you don't feel let down? Don't promise something you can't fulfill. We always wanna tell our partners something like, I promise I'll never hurt you, or I promise I will do X, Y, Z. And it's not always achievable. So make sure when you actually promise something that it's something that can be put on a timeline, that it's something that you actually want to, desire to, and are able to fulfill for the other person. And when someone makes a promise to you that doesn't meet those qualifications, actually say, hey, is that a promise or a hope? Like, is that something you're, you're going to, that you're desiring to do, that you're working towards? that you're manifesting for us and our relationship, or is that an actual solid promise? And reflect to them back what you hear, right? Because we're gonna hurt each other in relationship. So it's much more honest to say like, I'm gonna do my best to never hurt you and to always communicate clearly, than it is to say like, I promise I'm never gonna hurt you. Because we can't control A, how the other person feels, and it's unrealistic. We're two people and two people often have some kind of communication challenge along the way. If you're really trying to increase trust in your relationship, whether it be as an individual listening or as an individual promising, right? really make sure that you can follow through on what it is that you're saying. Even if you're saying a little bit offhandedly, make sure it's clear about, hey, I'm saying this offhanded. I think it would be fun to, I don't know if this can happen. Or, hey, maybe next year or within a certain time frame, I want to make this happen. How can we make this happen together? All right, so be really, really clear on what it is you're talking about. Now, the other aspect, your end. If you haven't communicated what you want, what you need, you cannot expect your partner to fulfill that. Even if you're dropping hints, even if you think you're saying it out loud really clearly, like, wow, it would be really nice to be taken out to dinner someday. I have this really nice dress that I've never worn kind of a passive way for asking what you want. 
And even if the other person says, yeah, I'd love to take you out to dinner so you could wear that dress someday. Is that actually an expectation? Is that a promise? Is that a commitment? Right? So as we start looking at how we're communicating with our partner, because I've been let down multiple times when I've said something like, oh, hey, I've got this. It would be really fun. And someone else says, yes, I'm going to do that for you. Or yes, I will take care of that. Or yes, I'm going to bring you there. And then they don't. I feel very let down. I feel very um, unappreciated, undervalued. And I start losing trust and respect for the person that said they would, even if that wasn't their intention. So I've learned to ask more clearly, although I don't always ask more clearly, right? We're all a work in progress about what I want. Now, the other thing is if you think they should know what you want, what you desire, if you think they should be doing something for you and they're letting you down, that's on you. It is time for you to communicate clearly in a way that your partner can hear that's not demanding instead that's open and saying hey I would really feel supported if you I would really feel loved if you are you able to do this for me because that would make me feel so amazing so great so wanted so desired whatever it is if you communicate in that way instead of just being like hey would you take out the garbage hey would you please empty the dishwasher be like hey I feel so much more loved when you support me around the house by emptying the dishwasher See the difference? And now the request becomes something where they are giving you something deeper than just a task. So I hope this was helpful. Please comment below. What is one thing that you really want your significant other to do for you? And just remember that no matter what's happening in your life, you are loved, you're loving, and you are lovable. Have a great day.